Whether this is your first time learning Next or you're just looking to see all the updates in Next 13, this video is for you. The goal of this video is to show you all the essentials that you need to know to build websites with Next 13. As of a couple weeks ago, all the Next tutorials out there are out of date because with Next 13, it completely changed how you create Next apps. So I highly encourage you to watch the whole video so that you don't miss out on anything. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started. To create a Next 13, app, you'll want to say npx create next app, and you'll want to say at latest, then give it a name. I'm going to say next crash course. And to make this be a next 13 app, you'll want to say dash dash experimental app. This will make sure that next 13 is installed and turbo pack already comes pre-installed with next 13. I'll explain a little bit more about Turbo Pack later. So you can just click return. You can decide whether or not you want TypeScript. I'm just going to say yes. And I'll say yes to ESLint too. You can go ahead and open up the app in your editor of choice. I'm using Visual Studio. The first thing you'll want to do is delete this pages folder. This is the old way of creating pages with Next 12. But with Next 13, we use app. They kept pages in there in case you're used to using pages, you can still use it and then slowly transition to app if you're used to Next 12. But since we're using Next 13, we don't need pages. So I'm gonna click on it, right click and delete it. The first thing I'll show you is how app works. So this is where you create all of your pages now. Your home page is this page.tsx file. If you're using JavaScript, it'll be page.js. You can open up a terminal and say, npm run dev to turn on your app and then go to localhost 3000 to open it. This is what your app looks like. The way you create new pages is within the app folder, you can just create another folder. I'm gonna say dashboard. Whatever you name the folder is gonna be the name of the URL. So you'll be able to see this localhost I'm gonna, in a second, go to dashboard slash dashboard. The way you create a page is within the folder, you create a file and call it page.tsx or JS. And whatever you put in here is what's gonna show up on the page. So I'll create a, a simple export default function dashboard. And I'll just return an H1 tag. And I'll say, this is the dashboard page. All right, and let's try going there now. And as you can see, there it is. So it's that simple. That's how you create pages. Now, another cool thing about uh, Next 13 is you can have nested routes. So say I want to say dashboard slash settings. Well, the way you do that is within this dashboard folder, just create another folder, call it settings, and that'll be the name of the URL. And within there, just create another page. I'll copy this function and come here and just change the name to settings. And now if you go to slash dashboard slash settings, it goes to the settings page like that. So it's that simple. That's how you create pages in Next 13. The next thing I want to talk about is layout. Layout is a way to share UI across pages. So if you open it up, you'll notice it has a shared head. And on the inside, the only thing that's going to change is the children. These children, this is another name for these pages that we just created. But say you wanted to share a, uh, a header across all of your pages. Well, in the root of your folder in layout, you can do that. So I'm going to just say header. I'll say global header. I'll put that in an H1 tag. And now let's go back. As you can see, there's a global header now. So if I go to any page now, it should have that global header. Yep, there it is. And I'll go to the dashboard page and the global header is there. Now, what if you want a different header uh, for a different directory? Like say all the pages within the dashboard, I want a different dashboard header. Well, the way you do that is within the dashboard folder, you can just create another file called layout.tsx or jsx. You can go to the global layout to kind of use it as a template. And a big thing to remember here is you absolutely have to have a layout for uh, the root of the file in the app folder, or it'll break your app. Uh, but for all the other directories, a layout is optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but you can. 
And so I'm going to go ahead and copy the layout from the root. I'm going to paste it here. I'll just change it instead of saying root layout, I'll say dashboard layout. And I'll just say this is the dashboard header. Okay. And it's yelling at me because I'm using the wrong CSS folder. I just need to go up one more layer. That should fix it. All right. So as you can see, it says dashboard header. Let's go to the settings page. And as you can see, it updated the text here. This is the settings page, but it kept the same dashboard header. If I go to the home page, though, it should change. Yep. So as you can see, it went back to the global header that's in the root of the file. So that's just a really cool thing uh, with layouts. If you want to maybe have uh, the same header or the same footer within uh, certain pages, within certain directories, and then just update the HTML, the JSX that's within the body of all the pages. Next, I wanted to talk about React server side components. With the new app directory, everything is by default a server side component. What a server side component is, is it'll use all the JavaScript on the server side and only spit out the HTML to the browser. So this will make your website load faster, the initial load time be faster. So you don't have to do anything at all to make it be a server side component. If you create a page within the app directory, it just automatically is a server side component. Now, if you want to use uh, JavaScript on the client side within the browser, you can still do that. The way you would do that is you would use something called use client. And I'll just show you how that works in the dashboard screen. So at the top of the screen, you're going to want to say use client. And now Next knows that everything within here needs to be loaded on the client side. So in the web browser of the user. Now, why would you ever want to use this? Well, it's very important with things like React hooks. You have to load things on the client side for React hooks to work. You cannot load React hooks on the server. So for example, if you wanted to use use state or use effect, which we'll go ahead and use that in the dashboard screen. If you wanted to use these, you have to do it on the client side. If you did not have this up here, Next would yell at you. It would say it can't use hooks on the server side components. Some other reasons you might want to use this uh, use client is if you depend on certain browser-based APIs or if you want to add certain event listeners. This is actually going to lead to some different issues when it comes to fetching data, which we'll go through that right now. So one of the cool things about Next 13 is it has the ability to create a, an error screen and a loading screen. If you load data within a server side component, so one that does not have the use client, then the loading screen will automatically load while it's getting the data, while it's fetching the data. And if there's ever an error with fetching the data, it'll show the error screen. But if you're using a client side uh, component, that functionality will not work. You're gonna have to create your own loading feature or error feature yourself because it will not work on the client side. And I'll show you what I mean. So right here, I'm going to create an async function and I'm going to call it uh, get data. And instead of fetching actual data, I'm just going to await a promise, a new promise. And I'm going to set a timeout for one second, basically just say wait for one second before returning something, just so I can show you how loading works. And then I'm about to create a hook called set name. And for the name, I'll say dashboard. And I'll actually move this function within the dashboard function right here. And above that, I'll create a hook called name with an update function called set name and use state. I'll say the initial value is an empty string. And then under the get data function, I'm going to create a use effect function. And within that function, I'm just going to say get data. And within here, I'm going to use some JavaScript. I'm going to say if name is truthy, say this is the, and I'll say name of the page, page. And if it's falsy, say loading dashboard page. 
So this is my way of creating a loading function uh, myself instead of relying on the new loading feature that Next.js 13 added. Before I show you how this works, uh, within the dashboard directory, I'm going to create something called loading.tsx. This is what will load whenever you're using a server-side component that is fetching data. It'll show this automatically. So I'll say export default function dash loading. I'll just return an H1 tag that says loading dashboard screen. And then I'll create an error page. Just say error.tsx. There's a specific way to create the error page. I'll put a link to it in the description below, but I'm just going to go ahead and paste the code here that's on the next JS 13 website. And it's just going to say something went wrong. Reset error boundary. All right. So let's go ahead and go to the dashboard screen and I'll show you how the loading screen that we just created will not show up. So normally, if this were a server side component, the loading screen would have showed up. But since this was a client side component, something with JavaScript being loaded in the browser, the loading screen did not automatically show up. And let me just go ahead and create the settings page to show you what I mean. In this page, I'm going to keep it a server side component. And I'll show you how the error message and the loading message will show up automatically. I created this earlier. I'm going to just post it in here. Uh, you'll notice in this settings page, instead of doing uh, creating the loading feature myself, where I have a ternary function, in the settings page, I'm going to let it load uh, itself. And you'll see up here, I'll go ahead and switch it to three seconds so you can really see it. All right. So again, this is the settings page and this is a server side component. Let's see if loading will work. So I'll go dashboard slash settings. And as you can see, it's actually working. It said loading page before getting to the, this is the settings page. So as you can see, it actually worked. It actually loaded this loading page because it was a server side component. Now to show you how the error page works, that this error page works as well. In the settings page, you can just comment out this name so that there isn't a name here. And I'll refresh the page. And as you can see, it went to the error page that was created automatically. The last thing is if you want to use Turbo Pack um, with your app, you can go to package.json. For next dev, you can say dash dash turbo. You'll need to restart your terminal if you do that. And then it'll open up your app using Turbo Pack. The thing with Turbo Pack is it is in alpha. So it's they say on their website that it's not production ready. So you probably shouldn't use it in production. But that is how you would add it if you'd like to. So those are all the major changes with Next 13 for all the ones who already know Next 12. Those are the really, really big changes. That's how uh, the app directory works, how routing works, how layouts work, loading, error. That's how you fetch data. That's how server-side components work versus client-side components. This last part, for those who are learning Next 13 for the first time, I just wanted to briefly explain how you can publish your website in about five minutes using Vercel which is the creator of Next13. All you need is a GitHub account in order to publish your website to Vercel. Create a repository and save your Next.js website to GitHub. After you've done that, after you've saved your project to GitHub, you can just come to Vercel.com, click sign up to create an account. I already created one, so I'm just going to click login. And you can say continue with GitHub, but it'll also work with GitLab or Bitbucket. And from there, you can say add new, click project, and you just import a Git repository. So I'm going to say continue with GitHub. And this is one I created earlier. So I'm just going to import this project, my next crash course. You can click deploy. It just takes a couple minutes at most for this to deploy. And once it's done, it'll go here. It'll say congratulations. You can click on it to be taken to your website. And you'll notice it'll have a Vercel.app URL. But this is already live. You can use this on a portfolio website. It's completely free for the hobby level. And then if you want to update the URL to be an actual URL, not a versal.app URL, you can go to dashboard, click settings up here, 
And down here, you can click domains. And then you can type your domain here, say my domain or whatever it is, .com. Click add, and you can just use recommended. Click add. And once you've added, it's saying this is already in use because this isn't actually my domain. But if this were your domain, a real domain, here it would show you the IP address. You could then just take that IP address, go to the DNS records in whatever your domain site is, like whether it's GoDaddy or something like that. You can just update the DNS settings and point that domain to the IP address that appears right here and your website will be live. So yeah, that's the Next13 crash course. I'm planning on coming out with some portfolio projects using Next13 pretty soon. So you'll want to make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of that. Like the video if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.